Hello, everyone. Hey, all right. How's everybody doing? Great. Uh, my name is Sharad Kerr, and I'm the executive director of the Ontario Nonprofit Housing Association. And I'd like to welcome each and every one of you to the official launch of our campaign called Housing Opens Doors. And we're absolutely thrilled to be here today. And we thank, actually thank heavens for the, uh, for the great weather as well. Uh, you know, whether we know it or not, affordable housing is essential to each and every one of us in Ontario. And today, we're asking your help to recognize that. Around us, you'll see 16 doors. Each one of them highlights an important aspect of what affordable housing does. It creates jobs and helps fuel our economy. It makes us healthier and helps young people be better students. It helps new Canadians to settle and helps seniors to remain in their communities that they love. It helps to put food on the table and offer a way out for people that need it. And it does all that and saves government money too. Affordable housing opens doors that we all need open, and we aren't the only people who think so. On each of the doors is a list of some of the organizations that have stepped up to support our campaign. They each recognize the value of affordable housing and the impact that it has on the issues that they care about. Some of our supporters are here with us today, and shortly they'll tell us about how affordable housing impacts their work and them. But before I introduce them, I want, you to, I want to encourage you to explore our doors, to ring those doorbells that are on the side of each door, and show your support. And you may be wondering whether ringing a doorbell actually makes a difference. Well, I assure you that it does. Each doorbell ring is a show of support for affordable housing and the role it plays in our communities. And it also shows unity with more than 156,000 households who are on waiting lists and the hundreds of thousands of Ontarians who are struggling to keep a roof over their head. Your doorbell ring shows that affordable housing matters and needs to be a priority in Ontario if we're building the kind of fair and equitable province we all want to live in. With each doorbell ring, our collective voice gets louder. And I hope you'll tell your friends, colleagues, and loved ones about our campaign. Encourage them to visit our website at www.housingopensdoors.ca and to follow us on Twitter and Facebook. And with your help, we can open even more doors than ever to affordable housing. And right now, I'd like to introduce to you some of our campaign supporters. They'll each walk us through how affordable housing impacts the day-to-day -day success of Ontarians. On my immediate left, is Sylvia Patterson, who's the president of our association. She'll tell us a little bit more about affordable housing situation in GTA. Sitting next to Sylvia is Gail Nyberg, the executive director of the Daily Bread Food Bank, who will outline the relationship between hunger, food bank use, and unaffordable housing. Then we have Dominique Grant, the president of the Co-op Housing Federation of Toronto, and a cooperative housing member will tell us about her experience in affordable housing and what it has allowed her to do. And then following that, Ron Wyborn, the president of the Canadian Mental Health Association Ontario Region, would help, uh, will help us understand the role that affordable home plays in supporting our mental health. And although he's not here yet, we are hoped to be joined by Derek Burlton, who's the vice president and chief deputy economist at TD Bank Financial Group, who will connect the dots between affordable housing and the creation of a stronger and more prosperous Ontario. So let me now welcome the president of ONFA, Sylvia Patterson. Good afternoon and welcome. What a glorious day and thank you for being here. I'm the president of ONFA. I'm also the general manager of housing and long-term care for the region of York. It's our pleasure to be here today to celebrate an important event. I especially want to thank our housing colleagues and I look around and see housing colleagues from around the province. Many associations are here today and your support is tremendously important as we share the work going forward. And I want to thank our panelists and our partners for getting behind our project. Together we have many years of experience and we come from a broad range of industries and activities that support affordability. But we're all here today to talk about the thing that binds us, and that's housing. 
The doors displayed throughout the square are symbolic of the opportunities that exist when people have appropriate housing choices, despite their income, their circumstance, their age or their stage in life. Housing Opens Doors is about getting all Ontarians behind affordable housing, the home of all issues. It's a multi-year campaign to make affordable housing a priority with Ontarians. Housing is a fundamental need. In our community, we recognize that housing connects people to the economy, to transportation, to the environment, and to important health and social services. A full mix and range of housing provides people at every stage of their lives with the opportunity to stay in their communities. Housing provides a foundation for interacting with the broader community and for general well-being, health, and social inclusion. Appropriate housing facilitates access to employment, to community resources, to support and educational opportunities. In growing municipalities across the GTA, we are challenged to build complete communities where people can live, work, shop and play, but that begins with housing. You've heard the statistics. More than one in five Ontario renters, many of whom are hard-working people with full-time jobs, are paying over 50% of their income in rent. As a result, they don't often have enough money for the essentials like food, clothing, transportation, and medical expenses. This is true in downtown Toronto, and it's true in the nether reaches of suburbia in the GTA. Poverty and the stress to provide an appropriate space to live is true everywhere. Over 156,000 households in Ontario don't have access to safe, secure, affordable housing. As the economy, the population, and our urban structure continues to change across the GTA, so does the demand for appropriate housing. Whether you live in the City of Toronto, the Region of York, the Region of Peel, Durham, or Halton, affordable housing is often out of people's reach. There are over 56,000 children on the waiting list for social housing in Ontario many of whom are in the GTA. Factors such as population growth, growing diversity among our residents, increased housing costs versus income levels, and an aging demographic will continue to influence local housing trends and options. We have some challenging choices to make in our communities. There have been many successes. We are thrilled today to think about the fact that the federal government has seen fit to extend their federal housing funding for housing programs. We were excited this morning to hear that the province of Nova Scotia has recommitted, but we have much work to do. The increasing diverse and complex challenges that impact local housing initiatives require all of us to take proactive and strategic collaborative responses. No one can do it alone. I spoke earlier this morning with someone from the media about the way we're doing housing today and the way we're doing it is by engaging many, many partners to bring whatever the thing that they have can help us to meet our goals. Your awareness of and participation today helps to raise awareness about the ripple effect the lack of housing choices has for our communities. By ringing those doorbells, you're proving that we can no longer close the door on this issue. Thank you for ringing the doorbell and showing your support. It's now my great pleasure to welcome our colleague, Gail Nyberg from the Daily Bread Food Bank to the podium. Thank you, Sylvia. I'm very happy to be here and, and happy that Daily Bread Food Bank is supporting this campaign because every day in this city a parent, a grandparent, makes a decision and that decision that they have to make is whether to feed their children or to pay their rent. You know, we, we heard from Sylvia the, the statistics about 50% uh, of income. In the clients that Daily Bread serves, it's more like 70% of their income is spent on housing. And until that changes, parents have to make that very, very difficult decision whether to pay the rent or feed their kids. Because you can decide to get less food. You can decide to get cheaper food. But you can't decide to pay only half the rent 
rent or 70% of the rent. You can't pay the rent on the living room and the dining room and the kitchen and not the bedroom and the bathroom. And so those decisions force many people in Toronto and in the GTA to make the decision to have to come to food banks so they could pay their rent. We know that because we survey about 3,000 clients a year and talk to them about what the driver is. And so we're very proud to support this campaign. We're very proud that there are many, many people here because the key to changing this is getting people who don't need affordable housing on board. It is only then when those of us who are not in the position of needing affordable housing get on board will politicians listen. So I do encourage you to ring the doorbell, ring it many, many times, and make sure when you talk to politicians, you say to them how important it is to the health of a community, to the health of our province, that we have access to good affordable housing. And I'll thank you very much. Thank you, Gail. And uh, before we uh, carry on, I'd just like to uh, welcome two of our illustrious city councillors who, uh, who are strong affordable housing advocates, Councillor Anna Bailao, who's also head of the Affordable Housing Committee, and uh, Councillor Mary Margaret McMahon. Thank you very much for being here today. We appreciate it. And now it's my distinct pleasure to introduce you to Dominique Grant. Hello everyone, it's uh, wonderful to see so many people out today. It's a beautiful day and uh, we're, we're really happy that we can have so many people supporting such a wonderful campaign. Uh, let me raise this up a little higher. So uh, I want to start by just talking about um, a little bit a theory that I came up with. I've, I've gotten the opportunity to travel extensively across Canada with the Cooperative Housing Federation of Toronto in addition to across East Africa. And um, I came up with a theory that's called limiting the imaginary. And basically today, because we're forced to process so much on a day-to-day, -day, our jobs, uh, our families, and all of the, the, the tasks that come along with that, we've begun to limit our ability to imagine down to the basic tools that we need to get through our day-to-day. -day. Now, by limiting our ability to actually imagine, we limit our ability to see uh, the endless possibilities that sit in front of us. And many of these possibilities actually lay in the affordable housing sector. Now, when we apply this theory to the actual affordable housing sector, uh, we see kind of the same thing. Many people have begun to see affordable housing as, as only providing shelter and only providing these basic things. Um, and in reducing affordable housing just to providing a necessity, we reduce uh, the interconnected effects that affordable housing has on Ontarians across the province and on the endless possibilities that our sector can actually uh, contribute. Now, um, this actually contributes to ideas of hopelessness and right now we're looking at uh, waiting lists that extend from anywhere from five to twenty years uh, just for for people and, and mothers and families trying to get into affordable housing and right now what we're basically doing is a lot of people have decreased affordable housing and the concept of it down to uh, it being an option as opposed to it being a need because of this uh, ability to limit um, our imaginary and, and, and this idea of hopelessness. Now, I just want to share a little bit about my story and how I got here today. Um, when I was about six years old, I moved into an affordable housing complex, which is down by Dundas and Spadina. It's called Atkinson Cooperative. And when my mother came to, came to Canada um, as an immigrant, you know, she went to university, also got a college uh, certificate and worked as a teacher. And working as a teacher and coming out of university and having a family did not provide enough finances for her to actually live in, in regular uh, market rent. So we moved into this community based on need. What quickly happened from that, you know, living with a single parent, was that we learned that Atkinson Cooperative is actually uh, was the one of the first housing complexes to have converted to a cooperative. And what a cooperative is, is a cooperative um, consists of a board of directors made up of um, members that live inside of the housing complex. These, these members and tenants actually play a role in managing the cooperative with the property management company. So what that quickly did is it allowed our family to connect with the idea of community and make it more than just about finances and about need, but about a reciprocal relationship in which we had a role to actually provide for our community. In addition, our co-op was gonna be providing services. Now, every single housing community across Ontario has a very intricate story, and if you you really look at this story it makes up the social fabric that that structures Ontario today 
And our story with Atkinson was that there was about one third of, of the members that lived there were actually young people. So we have over 2,000 people in that cooperative. And with these young people, they decided that they wanted to take control of their community and they wanted to play a role in their community. And what they did is they ran for their boards. Now by running for their boards and actually playing a role in managing the community, it created an opportunity for myself. At the age of 18, I decided to run for the Atkinson Cooperative Board and I was the secretary. And my second year, I was the president. And this opportunity let me know that as a young person, limiting our potential and our ability to do whatever we'd like and to contribute to Ontario is, is, a, is a product of limiting the imaginary. Now moving on from there, uh, I was introduced to the Cooperative Housing Federation and what they do is we represent 45,000 members across uh, Toronto and the uh, York region. Now we have over 126 cooperatives and in my first year I ran I was the secretary, my second year I was the vice president and in my third year I was the president. Now what this means is that I have the opportunity to represent a diverse plethora of, of members who not only make up people who are in need of, of cooperative housing and of affordable housing, but make up people who actually contribute to the social fabric of, of Toronto and of Ontario. And as a student, um, my cooperative and the, the Cooperative Housing Federation of Toronto actually provided a scholarship. Now our scholarship program has contributed over a million dollars in, in awards to students and it made it possible for me to go to school and to actually afford uh, an education. As, as a double major, you know, you're taking on double the amount of work and living in an affordable housing community or living in Toronto, students are struggling as it is. So with the scholarship and with these opportunities, what we're basically saying is that affordable housing contributes to an interconnected social fabric across Ontario. And by limiting our imaginary to actually see the potential that affordable ha housing has and limiting it just to seeing it as a need, we actually in turn limit our ability to see the potential of Ontario and of, of this sector. Now, you know, the standards, I want to address the fact that we are beginning to see affordable housing as an option rather than something that Ontario, Ontarians have a right to. And it isn't, it isn't something that we have a right to. And because we've begun, begun, we've begun to, pardon me, limit um, the opportunities in the way that we see this, we've begun to limit it and see it as nothing, as something that isn't actually necessary. So what I want to say is that, um, pardon me, by identifying and by connecting identity, need, community, um, we're able to connect, in, connect it to today. By reducing our imaginary and our imagination to the basic tools to get through our day to day, we end up reducing opportunities for those around us. We need to wake up. There are lots of people who are walking around today who are rushing to get to work or are on break. And um, I'm pretty sure that you know a few people that live in affordable housing. Or if you're a student and you're about to graduate, this is something that affordable housing is providing. It's providing something that regardless of, you know, where you come from, it's diversity. And I think that this is just a major thing that we need to factor in. Uh, with the cooperative sector, the end of operating agreements are coming up, which means that thousands of people who are on uh, low-income subsidies are no longer going to have those subsidies. And I don't really need to discuss what, what cr type of crisis is going to happen. So what I'm basically saying is today we have a campaign which is called, you know, we're, we're asking you to ring a doorbell. Why should you ring this doorbell and why should you stop, you know, across the street or to come over and to ring this doorbell? It's because we may not have them in the future for people who need them. And you might need them at some point. And in addition to that, we may limit the potential that our sector has to contribute to Ontario as a whole. So just take a moment, ring our doorbell, and uh, thank you very much. Thank you, Dominique. And now it's my pleasure to introduce you to Ron Wyborn. Good afternoon. I'm honored to speak on behalf of the Canadian Mental Health Association Ontario and would like to thank the Ontario Nonprofit Housing Association for inviting us here today. Housing Opens Doors is an exciting campaign that we are proud to be a part of. The Canadian Mental Health Association has long been calling for poverty reduction strategies that increase access to both affordable and supportive housing for vulnerable populations. We are acutely aware of the effect that housing has on mental health. For people who are predisposed to mental illness, losing stabilizing resources such as income, employment, and housing for an extended period of time can increase the risk factors for mental illness or relapse. As was mentioned earlier, one, one in five Ontarians are paying uh, up to over 50% of their income uh, toward for, for housing purposes. One in five Ontarians also at some time in their life will develop some form of mental illness. 
if 50% of their income is spent on housing, the struggle to access other essentials like food, clothing, transportation, and medical expenses have detrimental effects on a person's per mental health. For people with serious mental health conditions, safe and affordable housing can provide a place to live in dignity and move towards recovery. Income and, uh, income and housing are often identified as the most important factors in, in achieving and ma maintaining their health. Not only do we have a responsibility as a society to ensure that all our fellow Ontarians have access to safe and affordable housing, but we benefit from doing so. For instance, it costs approximately $486 a day to keep a person in a psychiatric hospital compared to a mere $72 a day to house a person in the community with supports. It's quite a difference. The numbers speak for themselves. Affordable housing benefits us all. Thank, thank you again for the, for the work done by the Ontario Nonprofit Housing Association for their hard work and for inviting us to speak today on behalf of the Canadian Mental Health Association Ontario. And a big thank you to all of you for attending. Affordable housing is a right that everyone deserves. Thank you. Thank you, Ron. And uh, now our final guest, uh, Derek Broughton, um, who is with the TD Bank Financial Group. Well, I wonder if that pain on the back of my neck is a bad sign. Eh? It's a pretty hot day today. Anyway, I'm pleased to be here on behalf of uh, TD Bank Group. Uh, excuse me. This is an issue that's uh, very important to the bank. Um, in fact, uh, so much that about eight years ago, I wrote a very in-depth report that was uh, commissioned by the bank on the subject. And uh, you know, part of the, the gist there is that we often think of affordable housing as a social issue, a health issue, and the points points have been very very clearly made. But uh, in our report, we really brought it back to the health of the the region's economy and the interlinkages between health, social, and economic are self-reinforcing. And I mean, you think about it just from a skills perspective, which is just one, one angle of it, but without affordable housing, it restricts the ability of people to participate in the labor force. In the long run, we know we're going to have skill shortages in, in, in Ontario, and uh, so that's one key aspect there. Uh, sadly, a lot of uh, the report, we made a lot of recommendations. Uh, a lot of it is, uh, is really unchanged. We haven't made a lot of progress in it, and um, I would say a lot of it is uh, disappointment has been on the supply side. Uh, uh, the condo boom in places like the City of Toronto have really sucked a lot of the resources in terms of investment in housing. And uh, so we haven't seen the number of units being built despite a lot of federal programs, Ontario programs, and municipal programs that are designed to spur housing. So here we are today. I don't see a major improvement uh, in terms of, I mean, you think about the government's facing enormous fiscal pressures at the moment. Deficits are going to be with us for some time, and it's going to mean there are risks. And I know the federal program was very good news. We heard reinvestment there, but in terms of provincial, it's going to be under some, some constraints. So uh, where we're hearing more about is some of the non-conventional approaches to rehabilitating the housing stock and building new affordable homes is going to be in areas like social finance, impact bonds. Um, I don't know, today uh, the federal government uh, announced that it's taking the whole social finance angle very seriously. And what that is, it's gener generally it's, it's taking a lot of private money, which is looking for to earn investment returns. And where the case can be made, you're also going to get social returns as well. It is a very compelling thing. And with government support, I think it'll help to push that forward. So, Looking at models like this, I think, could take us forward in terms of dealing with some of the constraints fiscally, and I think it's a good thing. So just to wrap up, uh, we take it back that the bottom line is that, from my perspective, from the bank's perspective, that uh, it costs the economy billions of dollars in terms of lost potential, in terms of money that gets allocated to dealing with some of the, the wellness issues that, that come out of it, some of the social. Uh, and environmental even, and uh, it's money that I think we need to divert in other areas. So it's very important that, again, we come here collectively ring a bell because it's, it's one of the biggest challenges we face. I'll stop there. Thank you. Thanks very much, Derek, and a uh, nice round of applause for all of our speakers today. Ladies and gentlemen, that wraps up our presentation. I want to thank each and every one of you for taking time out of your busy day to stop by, say hello, 
and recognize that housing matters. Please visit the doors, open the doors, talk to the people in blue shirts who know what housing means and what it represents. We hope you know, you have a little bit better idea of what it means as well. Ring the doorbell, show your support uh, that housing matters, and just remember one thing, housing is the home of all issues. Thank you very much.